Morning again. This is the USMLE SRT team, and we'll get started shortly. Uh, today's uh, webinar is all about US clinical experiences. So we'll have certain students, and you see one of them, Gretel, and we'll introduce them as well. And uh, they'll share their experience, learnings, tips uh, of USC, uh, you know, how all of you can actually benefit from USCE, wherever you do the USCE from. So as we get started, let me just uh, uh, get something from you guys. And when are you applying for residency match? So if you can take this poll so that we just get a sense of uh, where you guys are in your USMLE journey so that uh, we can uh, tailor it accordingly. And of course, if you are joining on Facebook, you will see, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you a link to uh, join our uh, <clears throat> webinar here. Okay, so take this poll, then we'll get started. All right, good. So uh, a lot of you are doing this year, but many are also doing next season. So, and uh, that's hi, hi. that. I do see our uh, the second student, uh, Rohan, as well. So let me make him the co-host so he should be able to share. Uh, so I did want to welcome both the students, uh, Gretel and Rohan. Rohan, you should be able to share your screen now uh yep let me hi yeah can you see hi. me yes so why don't we start with an introduction and then you will move to gretel and then we'll just dive into the agenda for the webinar yeah hi good afternoon everyone my name is rohan kumar i am an img from india i did my med school from uh, postgraduate institute of medical sciences pjms rotak and i am currently doing my rotations in the United States, and I'm here to share my experience with all of you and give you a few tips that I wish someone had given me before I came here. So, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Rohan. So, Rathul, uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Um, hello, everyone. I'm um, Rathul Hernandez. I'm an international medical graduate from the Philippines. I completed my medical education in 2011 um, at the Forestern University, Dr. Nicanor Reyes Medical Foundation. I did my home country residency in 2016 to 2018, and then I moved here in United States in 2019. I started um, my US clinical experience after completing my US MLE steps one and two CK in 2021. So I did some three months of telerotation, and then now I'm doing a hands on clinical experience here in California. Thank you. So let's get started uh, with you, Rohan. So in terms of preparing for the USCE, did you make any special preparation in terms of learning, getting ready for your USCE as you were starting? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, during the first one and a half months of my rotations here, I was preparing for my USMLE step two and I, I had already done my step one. So over here, all the residents and fellows prepare for the boards. So the question stems for the boards are very similar to step one, step two, and step three. 
and there is no set study material for it you have to keep yourself updated with latest research articles and outcomes of clinical trials so right now after my step 2 i have installed the application called up to date on my phone and it's very helpful uh, you can get a student discount on it also and it's what all the residents and attendings follow you get updates of the latest clinical trials their outcomes in the articles uh i can give some tips to all the students what to prepare for a usc so one thing that you can do is you can read up all the screening guidelines by united states preventive task force for breast cancer lung cancer colonoscopy cervical cancer because that is first thing that's heavily tested on usmle step 1 and step 2 and also over here most of the patients are follow up patients and you will be asked about it what needs to be done at this visit so you need to know all those guidelines another thing is that you can read up on major landmark studies and trials for bread and butter cases like diabetes hypertension thyroid diseases copd let me just give you an example there's a new drug which all of you must know about sacubitril valsartan combo which is used in heart failure so i mean if some patient comes with heart failure you will be asked do you know a study about this like over here all the medicine that's practiced is evidence based medicine and not guideline based medicine back home so i mean you can read up on major landmark trials which will help you you don't need to read the whole clinical trial the whole research article just what the study was about and what the conclusion came out of it i mean yeah that's the gist of it okay thank you very much so now let's get into your specific uh, you know usc so you've done several usc including with program directors and all that mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. tell us what have you learned in this usc so you spoke about evidence based medicine what else have you been learning what is the biggest take away uh, for you yeah so the first rotation that i did was in hematology oncology at uh, ut health houston and md anderson it was an inpatient and outpatient rotation we got to see a lot of cases of sickle cell crisis myeloid leukemias chronic myeloid leukemia acute myeloid leukemia i got to learn a lot about pain management of sickle cell crisis the opioid use system in the usa and the whole op opioid uh, situation i mean i got to learn about all the pain management protocols uh it always helps if you have experience with uh, you know uh pain management and opioid use in the united states i got to learn a lot about the monoclonal antibodies which are the latest drugs that are being used here in hemat onc i got to learn the emr epic epic is one of the most common electronic medical record systems used in the united states and i had access to epic and i got to learn all about it i got to know about the different types of insurance plans and how doctors navigate the whole insurance system to get the medications that they need uh coming to my second rotation uh it was in internal medicine at hackensack palisades medical center new jersey with a program director and uh, again this was a wonderful rotation where i got to learn about emr system widely used in the clinics i got to interact with the program director his residents and the faculty of the internal medicine department there an interesting thing about this rotation is that one week i had i was posted night float in the emergency room at palisades medical center so i mean i got to see uh focused i got to learn about focused assessment sonography for trauma fast and how an er functions with respect to the american system uh we did inpatient rounds at three different hospitals at hackensack palisades medical center at hudson general hospital at hoboken hospital and uh, in between the cases the program director used to play medical quiz with us so he used to ask us questions and divide us into two teams and it was a lot of fun yeah <laughs> yeah uh before i proceed uh, arti if you can post links to these rotations you know so that students can uh, look up the rotation those who are interested so keep posting these links and sure. also about other opportunities so one of the questions and i did this just poll you know the biggest challenge that students have reported uh, those who are in this uh, webinar they are saying understanding the us healthcare system itself was a big challenge for them and mm -hmm. of the emr so what has been your experience you know how difficult is 
understanding of the U.S. healthcare system and what can students do to overcome it? Mm -hmm. So the U.S. healthcare system, I believe, is, as I mentioned, evidence-based medicine is practiced here. In India, what we are taught is we are taught the guidelines and we just follow them. Over here, they read up on clinical trials and they follow what is the outcome of the clinical trial. They don't follow the guidelines which we are taught in India. I mean, they follow the guidelines, but in a different way. I mean, they follow it as per the outcome of the research article. So everyone over here uh, keeps themselves updated by reading up on articles. And that's one challenge that was, you know, uh, I had to face while understanding the healthcare system. And all the doctors with whom I rotated, they like to interact a lot with all the students. So you need to be interactive. You need to be social. You need to keep them in a conversation. I mean, they don't like it if someone is sitting quiet and not answering questions. I mean, even if you don't know the answers, they just want to understand your thought process and uh, they help you get to the answer. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if you were to summarize and give some tips for a very successful USC, what should students do? You know, maybe your top two, three tips. Mm -hmm. So I would uh, say everyone who does rotations in the United States must be responsive and interactive. You must be speaking to all the students, the residents, the fellows, the attendings. You must follow their instructions. You must be confident. Be on time. Be well-dressed. You can wear either scrubs, shirt, pants, have a lab coat with you. Uh, everyone over here wears a knee-length lab coat. Back home in India, we used to wear a shorter lab coat. And be social, you know. Ask other students about their journey. You get to learn a lot from everyone's journey. Be proactive. Act respectful. Other tips to make an USC successful, I would say, are before you go for an elective, you need to define your objectives for an elective. Uh, what I mean by that is you need to plan ahead. Start planning your clinical rotations and experiences well in advance. Research different programs, hospitals, specialities that align with your interests and career goals. Understand the requirements, the application processes, the visa regulations. Sarti has some very good clinical rotations. You should work with their team to find the right rotation with you. Uh, you have inpatient, you have outpatient, you have hospital letterhead, you have university letterhead, different states. So Sarthi tries to understand what you are lacking in your resume and they try to work with you to find the right clinical rotation for you. So I would advise everyone to work with Sarthi's team to find the right clinical experience for you. You must always remember that each clinical experience is a chance to grow as a medical professional and learn from different healthcare systems. Stay open-minded, show dedication and make the most of every opportunity. I mean, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Rohan. And, uh, you know, by the way, I do have a poll up, so we'll we'll see what people think of importance of USE. But let's go to Grethel now. Uh, mm -hmm. Grethel, if you are still with us. So, uh, you know, in terms of your US clinical experiences, give them a bit of a background on where all you have done the USE, and then probably we can talk about the challenges you faced while completing the USEs. Yes, uh, Mr. Pawan. So um, in 2021, after completing my US MLE steps one and two, um, I was also became pregnant during the time with complicated pregnancy. So I uh, engaged in telerotation space in Chicago, Illinois. The first was uh, with um, um, uh, affiliated, a physician affiliated with Elmhurst Hospital where we did mostly didactics um, with evidence-based medicine uh, and management with common medical conditions such as hypertension, diabetes, heart failure, um, pneumonia, and other um, common conditions seen by an internist. We also had some uh, simulation laboratories for patient encounters and some um, introduction to electronic medical record system, which is a clinical works. On my second um, month of telerotation, um, uh, the preceptor was uh, affiliated with Rush um, University, and we also had more of um, discussions with um, um, clinical trials, particularly on heart failure. 
So that was the focus of our discussion. And also we did some discussions on clinical trials on COPD and um, some simulation laboratories, again, for uh, patient encounters and, um, and um, um, uh, introduction to an electronic clinical record system. Um, the following year, so I got, uh, I, de I delivered my baby. I wasn't able to do my, um, any rotation. So I did my step three and um, did some research during that time. So this year I was able to come back and get uh, get back to to my USCE. I did another um, one month of telerotation based in Chicago, Illinois again. Uh, this time I had more an extensive um, hands-on rotation, uh, hands-on experience with the electronic medical record, which is um, practice fusion. So I was doing telemedicine. I called the patients, um, um, discussed them about their conditions, their management, diagnostic and management plans, and then called the preceptor about the patient's condition, the differential diagnosis, um, my uh, plan management plan about the patient, and then we called the patient together. After that, um, if there's any changes with the management plans, I call the patient again and then discuss it with the patient. I also sent some prescriptions and some coordinated with um, the um, other healthcare professionals regarding the care for the patient. So during my previous um, rotation, I had more of a overview of the health healthcare system, even if it was a telerotation. And then this time, with this month, I was able to get a rotation here in Los Angeles, California. It was a neurology rotation, a hands-on rotation, uh, where the preceptor is affiliated with Cedar sinai and UCLA. Um, so I had a lot of difficulty with this uh, rotation. Uh, so first, um, being here in California, most mostly they are Spanish speaking. So I came from the Philippines. I know a little bit of Spanish. I speak a little bit. I understand a little bit of it, but I'm not fluent. So most of the patients in the clinic that they're seeing are mostly Spanish speaking who uh, can hardly speak English or can hardly understand English. So they have the NPs and PAs who are seeing mostly of the patients. So they're giving most of the patients to, to those uh, practitioners. So I was seeing only mostly English speaking patients, but during the time that I, I, I see those patients, I make the most out of it that I had to make sure that I um, explain the, their patient's condition, the patient's condition in clear and simple terms for the patients to understand. And I had to um, explain the results of their diagnostic uh, results or procedures that were done and their management plans. And after that, they were happy with the care that I provided, despite I had been seeing about average of two to three patients a day. But for Spanish speaking patients, I was able to interact with them by doing procedures like VAT ENG. Um, so what I did is that I um, translated, I, I read the, the Spanish translation and then I pick out some, pick up some um, keywords for Spanish and then I show them the procedure, how they, the, they're gonna do it. And then I explain on the, to the relatives to repeat the procedure to them and then we'll do some practice. And after that, it was successful. It was effective for me to do the procedures using that technique. Um, another challenge that I encountered during my current rotation was that um, um, there was a poorly structured schedule um, with this rotation. So um, on my first few days, I was left hanging where to go because uh, the preceptor has a lot of clinics here in, in, in California for that rotation for neurology. And he wanted me to go to a certain location, which I didn't know. And then I didn't know what to do or uh, there was no proper orientation or structure for the, for the rotation. So um, another um, uh, difficulty I encountered was there was no direct supervision of the preceptor. Uh, the preceptor was only there during Wednesdays and he refused teaching rounds or any uh, further encounter with, with the students. Most of the supervision I got from the NP and the physician assistant. But however, I get the most out of it, you know, um, the clinic has a lot of complex um, neurologic conditions, interesting 
um, neurologic conditions, which made me uh, challenge to to read more on them and uh, learn from them. And so what I did is I learned from the NP and the physician assistant, whatever uh, learning they, they have through the, their experience being in that uh, clinic. And I was humbled to get their advices and their, their um, um, whatever they learned from that. So that's that, those are just my difficulties. So thank you, thank you very much, uh, Gretel. This was this was excellent, and and you know to all all the students who are uh, you know dialed in. So first, language can be a big challenge, right? So U.S. is a big country with a lot of cultures, a lot of languages, especially uh, Spanish-speaking populations. Uh, you know, can be challenging if you don't know Spanish. So uh, good to see how you overcame that. So some of the good tips. Uh, the other, yes, there are preceptors who are not as uh, well organized as you would think. So that's always a challenge. How do you keep learning in a very unstructured kind of environment? You may, all of you may get into residencies and these kind of rotations where the environment is not that structured. So uh, looks like you found out your way and you've been uh, doing, you know, well there. But uh, this is this is good feedback for, for the students as well on how to keep learning even when you are faced with such challenges. So this is this is very, very important. Uh, let's see if students have any questions, you know, anyone with questions. I think there's a lot to learn from both Rohan and Gretel's experience. So if you have questions, we can uh, take it. I will read the questions on the chat. So please mark it to everyone. And Aarti, meanwhile, you can you know start posting if they have questions about our research rotations or even or even the match plan. So. Uh, so one yes. question is, what is a typical hands-on, uh, to what extent you are allowed hands-on? So Rohan, let's start with you. So you've done, uh, you know, rotations with the program director and with Hemonk uh, director and all. So what what is the level of hands-on you typically ended up doing? Mm -hmm. So in my second rotation uh, at Hackensack Palisades Medical Center, which was a hands-on rotation, uh, in the first week, I was supposed to, you know, just observe and shadow all the residents who were going to see patients, as well as the older students who were also rotating with the program director. From the second week onwards, I was allowed independently to go see the patient first, take a history, do an examination. Then I would come out of the room and I would present the case to the doctor. He would then ask me some questions about the case and then we would go back in again and do the whole examination and all the things again. So, I mean, it's pretty much basically what you do in India. I mean, see a patient, present it to your senior. You, you're allowed to do the examination. You're allowed to take the blood pressure and do everything. You're allowed to palpate, percuss, auscultate. So yeah, pretty much hands-on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the follow-up question, I guess, what physical exams or tests should we learn before we start the USC? Is there anything? Uh, I would say read up on your clinical medicine textbook, like Hutchinson internal medicine textbook is a very good uh, starting tool for internal medicine. You can learn about all the different, how to examine a spleen, how to examine a liver, how to, you know, percuss a gall, uh, for the bladder and everything. So Hutchinson has a lot of information about all of this. So you can read up on that. That will definitely help you in your rotations. Okay, thank you. Uh, as we uh, wait for other questions, if you guys can fill up this poll so that we can uh, help you better in the other webinars. How did you know about this webinar or about Sarthi? So meanwhile, uh, let me take the next question to you, Gretel. Uh, for tele-rotations, uh, what tools did you use or, you know, obviously there are different types of tele-rotations where you could actually do uh, interaction with the patients or didactic kind of tele-rotation. So uh, was there any tele-rotation, uh, Gretel, where you interacted with patients? Uh, yes, Mr. Pawan. My last uh, rotation this May was the one that I had the telemedicine, which I had a patient actual 
I had actual patient encounter. So during this time, I called the patient. I asked them about their acute and chronic conditions, how well their, for example, hypertension, diabetes are controlled, they're taking their medications. And if they're, they have certain, uh, a new complaint and acute condition, so I have to ask details. Uh, for example, if they have like um, um, skin infections, you have to ask them details uh, about the the the, the uh, the description you have to ask them detailed description about the the skin lesions, for example. Um, it is actually uh, challenging. It's difficult to do telemedicine for that, but um, you just have to ask detailed questions about the conditions for us, you know, to get a, a more um, specific plans for the patients, management plans. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me get back to you with a question. How do you network while you are doing a USCE? Mm -hmm. So uh, you get to interact with a lot of residents and fellows because uh, the residents and fellows also keep on rotating with different doctors. So there are different residents and uh, fellows for each week. So you get to meet a lot of them. You get to meet a lot of IMGs who have matched. They are sympathetic to your situation. They understand what we are going through because they have been through the same thing. So most of them are very helpful. They share a lot of tips with you and they usually exchange emails with you. So that's one way to network and go about it. Okay. Uh, Gretel, question for you. Are we supposed to give differential diagnosis? Yes, it is very important to give differential diagnosis because this helps us, you know, with the management of the patient. Uh, we don't only consider what their conditions are, but we also have to consider other conditions that have the same presentation because we might be missing something else. Uh, just like in my previous telerotation, uh, the one that, where I engage in telemedicine, um, I've seen before I encountered the patient, before I called them, I I look through the, her, the, the patient's chart extensively. Uh, I check on their laboratories, their previous conditions, their medications. And then from that, I was able and then check on their acute conditions, their current complaints. And then I check on that, and then I was able to get a lot of differential diagnosis, which I uh, able to, to discuss with the preceptor before we call the patient uh, together. So it was it is really helpful to get differential diagnosis because that's how you help the patient um, uh, provide the proper care for them. And also, you know, it's a learning for, uh, growth for us professionally and personally also. Okay. I'll take the next question. So, Arthi, maybe you can post the link. How can we start research? What basic steps should you know before working on research and rotation? So, maybe give the link for our research uh, program. So, that will help the students. Uh, the other questions, uh, do tele-rotations really help? Uh, so, I, I think it depends. So, like in Gretel's case, if you cannot travel, if you have visa issue or otherwise, Telerotations are very good. They give you, and there are different types of telerotations. Like Arti will post, there are telerotations where you can have patient interaction, EMR access. So we have several of these type of telerotations. And then there are didactics uh, telerotations, like with the program director and all. So yes, if you cannot travel, then I think telerotations are also useful. Uh, let me see if there are other questions. Uh, <clears throat> uh, how do we network that we already answered? Uh, are home country LORs important for getting USCE? So I think if you are applying directly for an elective to a GME office uh, for top university, I, I think they will need some uh, LORs. So it can be your home country LOR. But otherwise, if you go through us, uh, we can take care of it. How much year of graduation gap is a red flag? Now, graduation year is a soft filter, but it is still there. So I think uh, the clock starts ticking after three to five years. I mean, then you really have to prove yourself to the programs. I think if you're less than three years, uh, you should be fine anyway. Uh, Okay, other questions for Rohan or Gretel? Uh, 
So maybe Gretel, you can answer this. In tele-rotations, uh, what else can you do other than taking history? Okay, so besides taking history, I also do uh, send prescriptions to the pharmacy. And then also I call um, the other healthcare professionals that are in care, home health care services. Uh, we collaborate with them um, to care about the patient, tell about the patient's condition, what we're supposed to be um, looking after or we're supposed to be um, uh trying to um what's the priority about the patient's condition so those those are the the factors that you, you can use e prescriptions and um collaboration with other healthcare professionals okay um next question i can take that my college in india does not offer vslo does it mean i won't get a hands on usce you can still can i mean we have a video on youtube and arthi maybe you can share the link to our channel so we have several videos where we are identified the list of USCEs and where uh, the VSLO, if your college is not VSLO accredited, you can still get those rotations. So you can look at our YouTube channel. Uh, I'm, I graduated in 2021, hoping to apply next year. Am I eligible? Yes, of course you are eligible. Uh, what would be my YOG? So if you are applying in 24, your YOG would be three years for most programs. So you, you are definitely eligible. YOG has nothing to do with eligibility. Uh, okay, I think that was it. I don't see any other questions. So... Uh, what kind of USC do we need to apply for general surgery? Obviously, you know, any surgical rotation is good. You could do one month of IM, but focus on uh, surgery related uh, USC, whether it's uh, inpatient or, or outpatient. Uh, should we write TOEFL since some programs require it? Most programs can waive off your TOEFL requirement, but it's an easy exam. so. Take it if you can, that will help you if that's a requirement. <clears throat> All right, with that, uh, let me thank my panelists, Gretel and Rohan. This was great, excellent. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, other students who joined us, thank you very much. Uh, much appreciate your time and uh, we'll see you on the next webinar. Thank you, thank, thank you so you. much.